Hello and welcome to today's CPD session. This presentation will provide a guide and reference point as we progress through the content and it can be found in the handout section of the Go Control um, webinar control panel. And you'll also find a participant handbook there as well. And if you've had a look already, you'll see that it's designed to be used alongside today's session activities. Its completion is not mandatory, but it might be useful for you to refer back to after the session and um, to record your ideas and any interesting points which were raised today. Please use it the best way what works for you. We do encourage questions, so please use the question box to share any you may have. Um, this session is a mixture of providing information exploring best practice, asking questions and sharing ideas. So if you haven't already done so, just please let us know that you can hear me okay, um, just by putting something in the question box. You'll find that in the control panel on the right hand side of your screen. I'm Rachel Webster, part of the provider development team. A little about my background, I have teaching and assessment experience for a range of different settings, including schools, colleges, private training um, organisations, teaching mainly IT qualifications and apprenticeship standards from pre-entry to level four. You can now see um, the objectives for today's session on the screen now. The session will last approximately one hour and the session is being recorded to allow all relevant colleagues to access it. So let's get started. And we're gonna start off by asking if everybody could respond to the first call, poll question, which is how thorough are your current initial assessment and induction activities? Now I'm just going to launch the poll now. And I'll just give a few moments just so everybody can um, put their response in. And just please vote for your preferred answer. Just waiting for a few more to come through. Thank you, everybody. They've all come through. And um, as I expected, we do have a range of answers and the majority of centres would have planned a range of activities to identify the starting points of the learner skills, knowledge and competencies. Now, the poll results show that we've got a mixed range where 50% um, of viewers are saying that they're, they're quite adequate and um, a couple are saying quite minimum. So, um, We'll see how today's um, session will help you. Now, I am aware that there's also a large amount of experience and knowledge in the session. And um, if you can share any ideas, um, we'll utilize that as much as possible. So let's get into some detail. For anybody using the participant handbook, we're on the top of page three. Now, I'd just like to get started by asking what initial assessment activities you're currently using. I'll give you a minute or two for you just to consider your answers. And while you're waiting, if you've already made a list, um, what I'd like you to do is just to rate them in order of their importance. You give them in relation to how useful they will be or how you're going to use them to um, assess your essential digital skills starting points. So I'll just give a few moments just so you can record some ideas. Okay, I'm going to run through some activities and evaluate how useful they could be by starting with the more formal ones. Um, if there are any um, 
you don't have listed, just please add them. And if you do have any activities listed that I don't, please let me know in the question box and I will share them. So previous quals learning can provide an overview of what they've already done. The application process, depending upon its level or rigor, can be quite informative. An interview, whether this is face-to-face -face or virtual, an interview can provide a wealth of information, but this would also need to be standardized to ensure um, validity and reliability. Also, the type of interview is important and the type of questions asked are also important. So if the learner is at ease, they will be more likely to share more sensitive information such as their specific um, support needs. Maths and English diagnostics. Um, I use the term diagnostics here rather than initial assessments. As for maths and English, exploring the gaps in knowledge rather than simply having an overall level is going to be far more useful to you and your students. Also, an assessment of um, digital skills and confidence levels. We can't assume all learners will have the same levels of skills and confidence needed for success. Written tasks, these can tell us so much, um, especially if they're completed in a controlled um, conditions. They can be handwritten or electronic and exploring English skills can tell us what students already know about format structure and the detail related to um, SPAG. Group work activities, and um, we're moving into formal methods here and observation of students carrying out tasks in the group can be very useful. Games, quizzes, the fun aspect can help learners to relax and can tell us so much more than the formal activities. Um, role play, something learners tend to dislike, but a very useful method for assessing a range of knowledge and skills. Um, for practical activities, and this is something quite um, vocationally based, this would include asking students to perform relevant practical tasks to assess their level of competence and confidence in relation to the skills needed in the area and context. And then finally, learning styles assessments. I know that this is an area which is widely discussed and even contested as being of any use. It's useful for our learners to be aware of their preferred learning styles, but for trainers and assessors, it's impossible to meet the needs of all students in every activity. It would also therefore be advised to ensure teaching and learning methods are designed to use a range of approaches and activities to meet the needs of a range of preferred learning styles. Learners should also be encouraged to develop the areas they have lower preferences in. OK, so that completes my summary. Please just remember to add any activities um, which I haven't covered into the question box. OK, then, thanks for your input and ideas so far. Um, let's have a quick overview of the purpose of initial assessment. So it's the opportunity for tutors, assessors to identify the starting points of their learner to explore the existing abilities and competencies of the learner and to clarify and expand on the detail in their curriculum planning. It should also include a range of activities to allow the tutor or assessor to support staff and allow them to plan effectively for long and short term goals, personalise learning activities in relation to starting points, meet any support needs both inside and outside the classroom, demonstrate and record learners progress, something we know Ofsted ask and look for and we should be evidence in this for quality assurance purpose. It should also be um, motivational for the learners and help them engage with learning and their programme in the individual learning plans. And these should be a source document tutors and assessors and learners refer to for establishing benchmarks and track and progress. Ensure the students succeed and is on the right program. So we assume some of the facts when identifying our learners starting points. We know their learning history, existing qualifications, and have gained some extra detail from the application enrollment process but we don't know everything we need to know about them just yet. 
Um, schemes of work will exist already, but they don't contain all the detail needed until we get to know everything about our learners. So plans will have a generic starting point. I'm going to use this image of a mountain to represent the learning journey the essential digital skills learner um, may take. So if we assume they're all starting at the base of the mountain at point A, the final destination at the top of the mountain is point C, and that's a successful completion of the um, Essential Digital Skills Programme. So the yellow arrow shows how they're going to get there. Or does it? They might start off well. The excitement and positivity of a new course normally gives them um, learners a strong um, start, but something happens and they go off track. So we put in some interventions or support and they get back on track until something else happens or the course content is too challenging for them and they go off track again. And this time there's a bit of a crisis in the learning. They really find things challenging and they struggle to focus and assessment activities show that they're not progressing. So further intervention support and activities are put in place, which allows them to refocus and they get it. They're progressing again and doing well. And near in the end of the course, there's a final push and everything falls into place. The initial assessment and induction period is the time to ascertain all of this detail. So Ofsted are keen for centres to do this as much detail as possible and use it to personalise teaching and learning activities during the course. It's also important for me to stress here that I'm not suggesting that you need to have a number of different plans, but one core curriculum plan that can be adaptive, responsive to the learners' needs, as identified in the initial and ongoing assessment um, activities. So if we go back to the investigation, we can plan to use all available activities and resources accurately identifying the learners' starting points. So informal methods can be extremely useful as learners will be more relaxed and tutors and assessors should have the opportunity to gain a clearer picture of their strengths and areas of development. Observations of the students will allow for staff to make ju judgments in relation to the range of skills and knowledge. And staff should use their subject knowledge, personal experiences to help them make judgments. Involving the learners in the process should raise their awareness and motivate them to engage in learning activities. And it's also not restricted to the direct teaching staff. So who else could be involved in the initial assessment process and how could you involve them? So next up, um, a little bit, a little enough of me um, talking, I'm going to ask you to um, launch um, a quick quiz to evaluate um, initial assessment in a little bit more detail. Um, the quiz will ask you to rate some statements as true or false. Please just go with your um, initial reaction and don't try to overthink them. And we'll just have a quick review of, of them after a few minutes. Um, I'm going to also put the link into the question box or you can scan the QR code, whichever works for you. So I'll just give you time to, to open it up and answer the few questions. I'll just give you a couple of moments.
and see responses coming through. I'll just give a, another couple of moments just to get them all in. I'm just going to share what's come through so far. So question one, initial assessments can be considered the first step in a learning cycle, which centered around the tutor trainer. I think that was a little bit of a, a trick one. It's, it's obviously centered around your learners. So a learning plans created to meet the learners needs. Absolutely true. I never teach in accordance of a learning plan. Well, that's false. We should all be teaching in accordance to the learning plan. I should monitor learning and review teaching regularly. Absolutely true. Initial assessment should be a positive experience. Absolutely. Right from the beginning, getting your learners on board with the process. Initial assessment should be a very lengthy process. Not at all, they don't need to be lengthy at all, long as you get the detail you need from the learners in order for you to, to plan your program. A good initial assessment can make sure that your learners get as much out of the learning program as possible. Absolutely true. And the essential digital skills program of study is never adjusted to best meet the learners needs well that's going to refer back to question four um, you should always be monitoring and um, your teaching and learning and adjust it um, to best meet your learners needs okay well thank you for your input there So this next slide asks you to um, review a few of the more formal traditional initial assessment methods in relation to what they do and what they could tell you. So we're still on page three of the participant handbook. Um, and could you please choose the methods you're less confident with or familiar with and record what you feel they do and more importantly could tell you about a learner. I'm going to start with an example. Um, the interview can demonstrate the students confidence levels, the attitude towards learning and the subject specifically, the attitude, levels of flexibility, motivation and engagement and what enthuses them about the subject and of course. I'll give you a couple of minutes just to record your ideas and then I'll bring up some um, the remainder of our examples up so you can compare them. So this is um, the participant handbook page three and um, just choose a couple of methods you're not less com you're less confident with. OK, I'm just going to put the remainder of our examples up now um, and just if you can just have a little compare um, 
with your own and just make some notes or any ideas you would like to. I'll just give you a moment to do that. Okay, we're going to do the same analysis um, with some more informal initial assessment methods. Um, can I ask you to choose two or three of these examples to review what the um, activity could tell us about our learners? Um, starting skills, knowledge and competencies. Um, you'll find this table on page four of the handbook. Um, but before you do, I'll just run through the first example with you, the informal chat and discussion. Just to give you some context, um, the chat could take place in or outside the classroom. It could be with the tutor or between learners in a wider group discussion. It could be in the canteen or in the training room during induction. This could provide a, a wide range of information, including the learners' motivation levels, their attitude to the qualification um, or the subject, their speaking and listening and communication skills, the depth and breadth of their experience, both in the subject and learning in general, their short and long-term goals, and any outside of learning commitments. The um, card sorting activity here relates to a supported discussion activity, and um, you'll find an example in the handbook as Appendix 1 on page 7. And for this activity, the learners would be asked to sort the statements into OK or not OK, as a preferring um, as preparing them for um, life or work. Learners could be grouped or paired related to their backgrounds and um, attitudes and asked to discuss examples on the cards. This would be easily differentiated and extended into a larger activity and can provide um, much useful information for the tutor. Now, if you could just please choose a couple of the examples to review and just to record your thoughts and ideas, and I'll give you a couple of minutes for this. I've put some ideas on the table and um, please review them in relation to your own ideas. And remember, we have a copy of the slides in the handout section for you to refer to later as well. Could I now ask everyone the following question? considering the assessment methods we've explored so far are there any that you don't use which you could i know from experience that organizations can have tired and tested procedures and processes which become ingrained and we don't always change how we do things it might be a good time to try out some new methods so for those already doing this great if not maybe consider trying out some of the ideas shared in today's session and please share any ideas you do have in the um, question box. Somebody said review hobbies and interests, create activities to relate to the class. 
excellent. Explore prior learning in a little bit more detail. The use of a questionnaire, that's a good one. And then finally, what other skills, knowledge and competencies are needed to be successful in the essential digital skills qualification? Please make some notes here on the bottom of page four of the handbook. Some ideas are shown here and include motivation levels, how effective and developed their digital communication skills are, along with their confidence levels. Traditionally, some of these come out over time and we deal with each one as the course progresses. Let's get ahead of the game and use the induction period to assess them fully and inform our planning and practice. Okay, moving to the final activity on page five of the handbook, we've now considered the range of skills, knowledge and competencies the learners will need to be successful in the um, essential digital skills study and assessment. Using the information, please consider your induction programme and how you could develop it further to meet the needs of the learner and be more effective. So some tips would be to vary the activities the students complete, making them engaging and fun when possible. Also building learners' awareness of their own development needs, really engaging them in the induction activities and highlighting the importance of assessing their entry levels. And um, remember the mountain they're about to climb and the importance of identifying individual starting points. Okay, we're nearing the end of the session. Um, many thanks for everybody's input and work in today's session. I'd like to do one final poll and um, I'm going to launch that now. So after attending the session, how is your knowledge, understanding or even confidence level of initial assessment induction activities changed? Just waiting for all the boats to come through. And the throw now. So we've got 25% um, extremely improved, and the remainder is moderately improved. So thank you very much for your input there. Now, please remember that attending this session is just the start of effective CPD. So please use what you've heard learned or thought about today to evaluate your practice on an ongoing basis, try out new or different induction activities and just evaluate their effectiveness. And I'm aware that we've covered quite a lot during the session, but hopefully you've had the opportunity to consider some of the methods and activities you may not have had the chance to do so yet and to also share ideas with colleagues. To complete this, can I please ask everyone for one takeaway, something new or consolidated as part of the session. So please record your ideas in your handbook or into the question box.
And in true teaching style, can I also ask that you set yourself at least one action to complete after the session? You'll find a place to record both your takeaways and action plan on page six of the participant handbook. And um, true, true CPD has a lasting impact on practice. The sessions we deliver and um, the support we offer in the provider development team is designed to promote and advance learning. So please don't see this activity as being the end of your professional development. Use it as much as possible so you can reflect on your good practice and identify any other further development needs. Okay, we've reached the end of today's session. Many thanks for attending and participating. Any outstanding questions will be collated from the question box and answered after the session. We are keen to get ideas from centres to inform the um, support and CPD we do offer. Please let us know about any other areas you'd like us to cover and you'll find the um, link to the Essential Digital Skills support page on the um, screen now. Once again, thank you all so much for your attendance and input and please take a minute or two to complete our evaluation form as you log out. We really do rely on your feedback and ideas to inform and improve our CPD activities we offer. Take care, goodbye and we do look forward to working with you again soon. Thank you.